Hello guys, how's it going today? First of all, Happy New Year to everyone. I hope you all had a great Christmas. I didn't really do a video around that time, so I didn't get a chance to say that, so maybe a bit late, but Happy New Year to everyone. In this video, we're going to go through how to launch your product right up to page one, why we need to do a launch, how to do launches um, using giveaways, the different services you can use, some different tips and tricks I use, um, some stuff that I've definitely never shared before and I haven't seen shared on YouTube before. Um, what other ways can we use to launch our product if we're not using giveaways? So using PPC, using Facebook, using Instagram, using your own brand, using email lists. Um, this is the stuff we're going to take a kind of a broad look into in this video. We're going to go into some specifics for certain bits and not other bits. So there's going to be a hell of a lot of information in this video. So you're definitely going to want to stick around to watch all of it because there is plenty of hidden bits of information in this video that you're all going to find very, very useful and it's really going to make you some money. I'm 100% sure of that. So I hope you all enjoy this video, guys. Let's get into it. So, let's actually start this video by just getting into the different ways that we can launch our products. And then in the next couple of slides, we're going to go into each of these points individually. We're going to talk about them, talk about how we use them, why we use them, and the desired effect that they give us and also the benefits and disadvantages of both of them and some tools you can use for every single one to help you get um, your results faster. So an amazing video guys, is gonna really help you launch your products to page one. So firstly, we have giveaways. I'm sure that everyone's very familiar with giveaways and the reason that we do giveaways to get our product to page one. We also have PPC, which is pay-per-click advertising on Amazon. We have Facebook and Instagram advertising and we have influencers. So. These are all methods that we can utilize to get our product to page one on Amazon, which is gonna really help us in our journey to hopefully getting those organic sales and not putting in as much work as we otherwise would if we wasn't on page one, okay? But before we actually go into each of these methods and break them down, I wanna first talk about why we want to get to page one and why that's such a big thing and it's so important for us to do that. So, the launches that we do, whether it be by giveaways, whether it be by PPC, no matter what we use, and later on in this video, I'm gonna go through the exact strategies that I use to get to page one. The launches allow us to get our products to page one for all of our main keywords. And this is important to get more organic sales and to get higher profit margins. And it's just much easier for us. So why do these points matter? It's much easier to get more organic sales on the first page because customers don't necessarily scroll to the second, third, fourth, sixth page of Amazon. So if you've got your product on page four or five for your main keyword, you're not gonna be getting as many sales as you are if you're on the first page. And these are known as organic sales. So on organic sales is when someone searches a keyword and they click on your product and buy it. So for example, if I'm selling a phone case, if someone searches a phone case into Amazon, they scroll down, they click on my listing and they purchase, that is an organic purchase. But if we're not on the first page, if we're on maybe the third or fourth page, how many customers actually go three or four pages back before they see a listing or a product that they like? Not very many, I would think. But in most cases, if you're still further back as the second, third, fourth page, you're just not gonna get as many sales as you are on the first page. So by launching our product to the first page, we're gonna get much more sales and we're going to be able to rely less on PPC. Because if we are on page five or six, we're not gonna be getting very many organic sales just to be realistic. Not very many customers are gonna go that many pages back, then find our product and then buy it without finding one first. So if that's not happening, our only way to get sales up to that point is by using PPC, pay-per-click advertising, to get these sponsored spots on Amazon, which is basically when you type in a keyword to Amazon and the first couple of listings there have that sponsored badge, that is people using the pay-per-click advertising system. So if we're using that, that's the only way we're going to be getting real sales if customers aren't organically finding our product. And if we're using pay-per-click sales, which is absolutely fine and I always use them, even my product is on the first page, but if you're not combining that and getting organic sales as well, then every single one of your sales is gonna have an advertising cost. And that's gonna bring down your margin for every single product, meaning you're gonna make less profit. And you're gonna have more work to do by managing these campaigns because they're the only way you're making money. So if your product's not on the first page, you're missing out on money, you're making more work for yourself and you're not getting as many sales. So launches are so incredibly important to the success of our product basically, and to actually having that passive income from Amazon. 
So if we go ahead and just move on to this next slide, because this is a really, really key point that everyone needs to understand before you do any giveaways. You're not meant to make money during this process, okay? And that is so, so important because I see so many people, they start their PPC or they start doing their giveaways and they stop halfway through because it's costing them too much money. They've got too much money going on advertising. They're losing loads of money in Amazon FBA fees when they're doing their product launch for the giveaways because you still get charged Amazon FBA fees during your giveaways and you still have all the exact same costs. So whether you're giving away a unit or not, you still have the cost of goods, the cost of shipping, all of that stuff to cover. So you will be losing money as you're doing your giveaways and people just don't seem to understand that when you go into your giveaways, you are going to be losing a lot of money, but that's fine because this is a business, okay? This is something that will hopefully make you income for months and months, maybe even years to come. So if you're losing money for maybe a month just to get to the first page to set you up for the next year, does that really matter? You've just got to understand this is one of the costs of getting into Amazon that during your product launch, you're probably going to lose money. How many businesses do you know that start up within a month, they're making complete passive income and not really doing much, okay? So just to lose money for one month, it's not too bad. And just realize that going into the launch, you will be spending and you probably will be losing money. But that's all for a cause to get you to that first page. The second point underneath is do it or don't. I see a lot of people, they start doing their giveaways and they're giving away units and all of a sudden, when they want to give away maybe 80, they get to 40 and then they stop. Or they do, instead of being recommended to do, or they know they should do 80, they decide, oh, I'll be fine of 60. If you do just a, that little bit less, you're gonna get to the top of the second page, your giveaway's gonna stop and you're gonna drop back down again. So then you've got to the point where you've given away 70 units instead of like 85, you've got to the second page and now you're losing rank again. So you've basically just given away 75 units and you've just got nothing for it. So you either bite the bullet and do it or don't because all you're going to do is just waste units getting to the top of the second page, losing your rank again and you just wasted money, wasted product and it's just a complete waste of everyone's time if you're going to do that. So if you're going to do your product launch, you probably will lose money but you're going to get to the first page if you go all in and you do it right and understand that it's a sacrifice that needs to be made and that needs to be taken and it's going to be worthwhile for you in the long run. So getting on to the actual launch strategies, we're going to start with giveaways where there's two main services in the UK that most people use, which is Viral Launch and JumpSend. Personally, I use Viral Launch um, over JumpSend for the giveaways, but I do use JumpSend for email automation sequences. There's other email automation sequences like services out there that people use. Um, they, you can use that. I don't really have a preference. I've just always used JumpSend. But just to compare the giveaways on JumpSend to Viral Launch, I've just noted down here some of the advantages and disadvantages, which are kind of why I chose Viral Launch to do my giveaways over at JumpSend. So when you decide to do a giveaway launch with Viral Launch, you actually get assigned a business manager. So you can uh, basically share your listing with them and they can look at it and you'll basically go through it together and you can say to them, for example, my product is a phone case, here's my listing, you can go check it out, see what it's all about. And I want to rank for the keyword phone case and phone case holder and give them a few keywords, but normally you wanna only target one or two and they'll go and they'll and, like research it for you and they'll tell you how many units you have to give away. So. Obviously, we already know that we have to match or beat the sales of the people on the first page, which just basically means makes sense, really. If everyone on the first page is selling 10 units a day and you're selling three units a day, why would Amazon put you on the first page? Because when you make a sale, they make money. So if you're making less sales than everyone else, why would they put you on the first page with the people making them more money? It doesn't really make sense. You have to match or beat their sales, which is just one of the... Um, contributing factors to ranking on the first page, along with like the quality of your listing, your reviews and all this other stuff. Not things we're gonna get into now because I've got that in other videos, if you wanna check that out, but we have to match or beat their sales. So the viral launch manager will go in and he'll say, okay, I've looked at the keywords you wanna rank for, I've looked at the competition, I think you need to give away 60 units over the course of a week, and then you'll be able to launch your product. So you actually get that almost validation from a person who is basically knows what they're doing so that you can be more confident in your launch. So those are the advantages of Viral Launch. However, the disadvantage of this is it is $99 per launch with Viral Launch, which is more expensive than JumpSend, which is $29 per month. 
Um, plus with jump send you get the email automation sequence so you also get the launch and the emails in one so it is cheaper but with jump send what I found is that you get more fake buyers so if I was going to do a launch through jump send and I set a 90% discount for example I would soon find that once I've started giving away the codes and people have started buying my product I would find my product on eBay or people are hijacking my listing um, whereas I don't really find that much with viral launch because with JumpSend, me and anyone can go into the JumpSend store right now and purchase a product for 99% off. So most of the people that are on JumpSend are just bargain hunters. And if you're going to do a giveaway, it has to be like 90% plus on Viral Launch and JumpSend. Otherwise, you're not really going to get any results. So you go and do your 90% discount and you're mostly just getting bargain hunters or just buy anything. And they're probably not even going to leave you a review or anything like that, which is always a bonus. They're just going to buy it. They might then sell on eBay, hide out your listing. Whereas with Viral Launch, they have a like dedicated customer base that they market to that doesn't really do this because it isn't just full of people that are looking to resale and do things like this. They actually have a proper customer base that are used to and like normalized to buying products at a discount and leaving a review. So that's why I lose Viral Launch over JumpSend. And giveaways are an amazing way to get ranked on the first page by matching their sales. So Amazon, like you spike the Amazon algorithm, they say like, whoa, this person is getting loads and loads of sales, he's making up loads of money, we're going to put him on the first page. So that's how giveaways work, and I still use giveaways to launch my products today, um, along with other things I'm going to get into in the future slides. So a top tip for anybody that's going to do a product launch is use Helium 10. Uh, just Helium 10 is such an amazing tool. Um, it, it's honestly, I literally can't even put it to words how much you need to be using Helium 10. If you're not using Helium 10, you are missing a trick, honestly. What Helium 10 does, and this is completely free by the way, you don't have to like pay for this at all. Helium 10 allows you to input up to, I think it's around 20 keywords into their system, and they'll track your rank for those keywords um, while you've put it into their system. So if you're doing a launch for um, phone case, iPhone phone case, Android phone case, and you're targeting all these keywords and you do your product launch, you're doing loads of PPC, you're doing all this stuff, you're doing influencers, Facebook ads, all these different things. How do you know if your rank's increasing, if it's going up, down, sideways, around in circles? You have no idea at all. So by using Helium 10, you can pin all the word keywords that you're trying to rank for and they'll show you that you are ranked number six. This is, um, for example, six positions down from um, the last 24 hours, or you're ranked number 47. This has gone down by 32 for the last 12 hours or up by 50. So you can see your rank changing, going up and down. So when you make a change to your advertising, when you make a change to your giveaways, when your giveaways stop, when you change the keyword you're targeting for your giveaways, you can actually see the effect that's having on your keywords and your rank. So you know what's happening. You know if your giveaways are ineffective because if you're not using Helium 10 and you're doing all this stuff, how do you even know where you're ranking? If you wasn't using Helium 10, you just have to go through page two, page three, page four, and just try and find your product manually for every keyword you're targeting that's just not very realistic and it takes a long time. So definitely get Helium 10 completely free. I 100% recommend it. And I'll include a link in the description for Helium 10 just to help all you guys out. So pay-per-click advertising is an absolutely amazing way to get ranked on the first page because just by using the advertising in itself, you can get that sponsored spot on Amazon. So how do you actually go about using PPC? I'm sure all of you are like familiar with this, but there's a kind of twist I like to put on it, especially when I'm trying to launch my product and not just trying to use PPC for the data it provides. So what we'd normally do if we're doing a PPC campaign is we'd start our automatic um, PPC campaign. We would uh, start that after we get maybe three or five reviews, just because that's gonna help us get more sales and it's not gonna waste our budget. Just for example, if you're gonna spend 10 pounds on advertising and you're directing people to a listing with absolutely no reviews, you might get loads of clicks because your listing's good, but once they actually get there and they see there's no reviews, they might not purchase it because there's no social proof for that product, so they'll click away again. So it's costing you money without getting you any sales. So we want to have a few reviews on our listing before we actually start our um, PPC, just to make sure we're not wasting our budget and we're getting as many sales for our ad spend as we possibly can. So we want to have three to five reviews before we start automatic campaign. 
want to run this for at least two weeks and this is just a fairly obvious why we do this. An automatic campaign, what it basically does is it lets Amazon scan our listing and they pick out all the keywords. So they look at our title. If they can see that our title has the word iPhone case, portable case, waterproof case, hard case, soft case, if they can see all these keywords all the way through our listing, then they can basically gather that our product is probably um, an iPhone case, okay? It's probably a case for some kind of phone. So with that data, they're gonna go ahead and they're just gonna chuck our listing up all over what they think our product is, all over Amazon, okay? So it's gonna appear under this keyword, it's gonna appear under this keyword, it's gonna appear in other people's listings. And from that, Amazon's just gonna get a massive amount of data from people clicking our listing, going onto it, showing it to people, um, how many times they're clicking on listing, how many times they're buying it, what keywords they're searching and then buying our product. And we're gonna get all of this data from Amazon, but if we only run our campaign for one day, we're not gonna get a, a really fair result. And I always like to use the analogy that if I have two people and I give them both a bucket of sweets, for example, and I tell them to stand at opposite ends of the road, and I say, say to them both, sell as many sweets as you can, I give them two hours, and they come back and one kid sell more than the other, that doesn't mean that one kid's the better salesman. If I go ahead and give them two weeks to sell and then come back to me, I've got a much broader range because on one day, more people could have walked on this end of the street than this end. It could have been a rainy day. It could have been a day, for example, when people just weren't feeling like sweets. But if I give it two weeks, the data gets more and more and more reliable as Amazon's testing more keywords, you're getting more clicks, you're getting more sales and just more stuff's happening. Your data is just much, much more accurate. So once we've done this automatic campaign, we've run it for two weeks, we then look at the campaign and we look for keywords that have the lowest ACoS and the ACoS is the advertising cost per sale. So for example, if I spend five pounds on ads and my product is 10 pounds and I get one purchase, my advertising cost per sale would be five pounds, which is basically 50%. 50% um, isn't that good, the lower the better. Obviously the lower you spend on ads to get a sale, the better. So we wanna get all these low cost um, for advertising keywords. I wanna put them in a manual campaign, which is basically when we say to Amazon that we wanna stop you from just showing our listing absolutely everywhere because this area of where you're showing our listing is costing us a lot of money and um, this area is doing really well. So we wanna take that keyword that's doing really well and we just wanna target that specifically. So for example, if iPhone case is doing really well, but just phone case isn't, then we can get rid of phone case, just get iPhone case and tell Amazon, we just wanna target this keyword, which is really, really helpful when we're trying to rank our product. Because if we're trying to launch our product to page one for phone case, what we can do is we can go to a manual campaign and we can say to Amazon, we're going to put a really, really high bid in for phone case. Because basically what PPC is, is just people bidding. It's all just a game of bidding. It's like, for example, when you're on eBay, if you're bidding for a product on eBay that you want to buy, the highest bidder gets the product. So the highest bidder gets the top spot. So if you're bidding for the keyword phone case and you have the highest bid, then you're gonna get that first spot. So people are gonna click phone case, they're gonna see that your listing's there straight away, and if you've got a good enough listing, they're gonna click it, they're gonna purchase it, and then you're gonna get a sale from that. So Amazon can basically see a customer has searched this keyword, they've bought your product, and if you keep doing that and doing it and doing it, you're gonna increase your rank for that keyword. So just one thing I wanna uh, mention here is forget the suggested bid. Amazon's gonna suggest a bid to you. So when you pick the keyword phone case, they're gonna to say to you, we suggest a bid of 60p for this keyword. Forget that, basically they don't know what they're talking about. Um, if you bid the um, recommended bid, from what I've seen of all my students and all the campaigns I've run, you'll get very, very little impressions, you'll get very, very little data, you'll get hardly anything. So I completely ignore the recommended bid. Um, I'd normally put a bid of £1.20, £1.50, even £2 on a keyword if you wanna go really aggressive to make sure that you get that highest spot. Because if someone's uh, bidding more than you, then you're gonna go down further and further down the page, maybe onto the second page on your sponsored ads post and you're not gonna get that organic sales, which means you're not gonna get that rank and launch a product for that keyword. So using advertising is absolutely amazing for ranking and you can use PPC without actually using giveaways. So if you think your product isn't very competitive and you don't think you really need to be able to give away 100 units to get to the first page, 
you could just use PPC and go really aggressive. So do a really high bid, um, spend maybe like 10, 15, 20 pounds a day on PPC. As I said, you're probably gonna lose money, but it'll probably be cheaper than doing the giveaways. So don't be worried about that. If you don't think it's competitive, use PPC and you can get ranked just using PPC alone. So great method is using PPC. Um, and 100% you can do that over giveaways if you want to, but it really depends on how competitive your product is. So Facebook and Instagram ads. I've written quite a bit about this one just because I think it's very product specific on what you do it for. And what I mean by this is if you're selling, for example, a dog toy, it's very easy to target people on Facebook and Instagram, um, people who like dogs, who like animals, who have dogs, um, who like pages around dogs, who purchase a lot of like dog toys and things like this, it's very easy to target those people and market to those people. However, if you're selling, for example, toilet paper, you can't really target people on Facebook and Instagram who like toilet paper because everyone uses it, but it's not really something that you would market on Facebook. How many times do you see ads for toilet paper on Facebook, you know? It's just not really one of those things you, that you can market and target people for. So. I think it's very product dependent. On some products, it can work absolutely amazing. So like I said, if you're trying to sell a dog toy, Facebook and Instagram ads can be absolutely amazing for you. But for my general opinion on Facebook and Instagram ads, I think by advertising on these platforms, it's much, much more advanced and you can do so much more in like retargeting and all this different stuff than you can with Amazon that you don't really need to be doing that for your product launch. And I think it's something you could get into further down the line unless you're already well rehearsed in how to do Facebook and Instagram ads. Because when you're first starting, when you first got your product into Amazon and you're getting like completely overwhelmed with all your information from your um, PPC campaigns, your giveaways, you're getting loads of sales, it's all happening. This isn't really the stage you wanna overwhelm yourself with Facebook and Instagram ads because they can be very complicated if you don't know how to do them. And it's very, very easy to lose a lot of money by doing it the wrong way. Having said that, if you know and you're confident using Facebook and Instagram ads, then the potential that they bring is absolutely huge. You can build email lists, you can build brands, you can provide value, you can do so much to like basically sell your product and get so many extra sales. And even like by building an email list by using Facebook and Instagram ads, you can like create an audience that you can remarket to, but with special offers, if you're gonna bring out another product, you already have your own little audience of people you can advertise that product to who you know purchase from Amazon and you know um, actually like respond to this like being advertised to. So it's an absolutely amazing opportunity for people, but unless your product is very, very attuned to it and it's very easy to target people, I wouldn't normally recommend using Facebook and Instagram ads straight away, especially if you're not already used to them and you're not well rehearsed in doing Facebook and Instagram ads and you don't just really know how they work in general. So the last one that we can use is influencers. So any influencers on like YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, it's all like just as good as each other. Um, the way that we pay these influencers is normally for like a one-time fee or commissions. And basically what they can do is they can check up a post about your product. They can show themselves using that product. So for example, if you're selling a piece of gym equipment, you might want to target someone who's um, a big bodybuilder or they're a model or anything like this and they have a big Instagram following, they can show themselves using your product and that might get a few sales for your product. It's a very good way to launch it. But just some things you want to be careful of, you want to look at how big the audience is and even more important than that, you want to look at how many like um, engagements they have on their posts. Because if someone has say 300,000 followers on Instagram, but their posts are only getting six or seven likes, they're not really the influencer you want to target because clearly they don't have an engaged audience and they've just bought their followers basically. Their followers don't really care what they do. So you want to make sure their audience is engaged, that they like react to things, they're, they actually like follow the person and they care about what they're doing. And if that is the case, influencers can be an amazing option. But again, it's product specific. You can't really use an influencer for toilet paper, whereas you can for if you're using a gym product by using bodybuilders and just things like that. So you've got to think about your product and the limitations of what you can do with that product. But influencers are absolutely amazing if they if your product suits it, basically. So moving on to reviews, how do we get them? I've said before that they're great to have before a launch because we don't really want to do our PPC and all this stuff without any reviews. We're directing people to basically a cold listing that doesn't have any social proof. So firstly, Amazon Terms of Service, 
we can't have any incentivized reviews. And this basically means that we can't say to someone, if you buy my product, um, I'll completely refund you if you give me a review, or I'll give you a free product for a review. There can't be any exchange of anything, like in terms of like paying them for a refund, anything like that, in exchange for a positive review. You can't even ask someone for a positive review. You can't say, can you buy my product and give me a positive review? You can, however, ask for an honest review, but you just can't ask for a positive one. You can't exchange anything for that. And just always keep up to date on the terms of service because by the time you're watching this video, they may change. So no incentivized reviews. So how do you really get around this? Of course, we have email automation sequences, which are absolutely great. So when a customer purchases your product, um, an email automation sequence automatically gets sent to them. So you can send one saying your product's been dispatched. Then you can send five days later, um, we hope you enjoyed your product, we hope you're enjoying it, Get blah, 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 blah. Could you leave us an honest review? Um, have a link. And to be honest, I just wanna go ahead and show you something in a minute, which is my own email automation sequence um, that I use on Jumpsend, Jumpsend even, or like a template of it, and show you just a quick tip that's really gonna help you increase your conversions um, to an amazing amount. So this is Jumpsend, and this is an email automation sequence. So we can see the timeline here of what happens. The customer has purchased the item. They then get an email um, saying like, thanks for the order. Then when the product delivered, two days after, they get email for a first review request. Then five days after, like a second email request. And you can do as many of these as you want. This is just the automatic template Jungle Scout gives to you, or jump central, I say. Um, this is the automatic template they give to you. And when you click on these little um, circles here that gives up the review, um, the email, should I say, they give you a template that they recommend, but you'd want to go ahead and change this template and not use the one that they give you because this thing here where it says product review link, review this product, you wanna take out that link and you wanna go up here to this little thing where it says auto fill tags. You wanna click on that and you wanna insert the product review link stars because the product review link stars are much, much, much more effective than just using the um, other options because they have a higher rate of being clicked. And this has actually been said by um, Greg Mercer, the, the owner of like Jumpsend himself, that this is the most effective one and it works It works the best basically. So this is just much, much more effective than using the other product links because it just gets higher clicks and it'll get you more reviews. So just as for some more quick tips, in my email automation sequences, something that I've never shared before and I've never seen shared on YouTube at all before, um, but it is actually quite funny. In my email automation sequences, I actually pretend to be a girl. And it might seem funny, but it's actually, it, I've tested this so extensively, and it's actually really like, honestly true for my results, that by pretending to be a girl in my email automation sequences, and like signing off like as a girl, and speaking as a girl, and doing this stuff, I actually get more clicks and get more reviews by doing that in my email automation sequences. Um, I don't know why that is. I don't know um, what it is about being a girl that people like and they seem to engage more with, but that's just a secret for you guys that you may not have known before, but this is just the, like the hidden bits of like um, knowledge and things like that that are just like scattered throughout the course um, and just some little things I'd like to share with you guys now and again, just to show you that the stuff that we're doing in the course and stuff that we're teaching is just stuff that people don't mention. So along with like being a girl, you want to like be funny, you want to be relatable, you want to be all these things. Um, to get more reviews in your email automation sequences and like do stuff like that. If the email automation sequences aren't working for you because like typically you might get a one to 4% response rate in your email automation sequences, you can use friends and family, work quality and things like this. That's against terms of service. You're not allowed to use friends and family and stuff like that. I'm not saying that I do or don't use that or that I do recommend for you to do it. But if you are going to do it, I wouldn't use anyone that I've connected to the same internet as and stuff like that. I wouldn't use like really close family and really close friends. However, if you've got a mum, brother, sister, cousin, and you ask their work colleagues, someone that you don't really know, you've never really been to the house, that could be a great option. Maybe some distant friends you don't really speak to or like talk too much, you haven't really connected to the same internet as them before. That could be a good idea. As again, not recommending it, but that can be a great way to get reviews. Then how to reduce negative reviews because as much as you wanna get reviews, we don't want any negative ones. So in our email automation sequences, we wanna really make the point clear that they have any issues, if there's anything wrong with the product, anything at all, even if it's a small issue, 
to reply to the email and contact us because if they have the option to contact us and sort the issue out, for example, if I get a con if I get contacted even from one of my customers about a problem with the product, um, I just give them a refund, I give them um, a replacement product, and I do everything I can to turn that negative like feedback into a positive one, or we'll even get a positive review from a negative start. Whereas if they don't have the ability or they don't think to contact you because you haven't made it clear, the first thing they're going to do is go straight to Amazon and leave a negative review from a problem that could have been simply solved if they just messaged you first. So that's something you definitely want to do in your email automation sequences. And this slide alone is just packed with value. So I hope you implement some of the things that we've just talked about here. Um, how do I launch my products when I actually do a product launch on Amazon? My personal tactics, what I do and what I do every single time is I use viral launch, I use PPC and I use Facebook ads. I don't often use influencers, but I will if the product like entails it, but I use all of them. If I want to rank for a product because the products I normally go for are quite competitive, I go absolutely all out. So I talk to my viral launch business manager. We go through the product. We think about how many products we should launch with, how many units we should do. If for example, we need 80 units to be like given away, I might do 60, 70. I might then match up the remaining amount like for the same keyword. So if you said to your viral launch person, you want to target phone case um, and he's recommended 80 units, I'll give away 70 giveaways. I'll then target iPhone case really heavily with PPC. I'll then do Facebook ads and everything um, to try and get more sales to the product just for everything. And I'll just really go as hard as I possibly can into like that um, single keyword just to really like just completely bombard it and blitz it with sales from absolutely everywhere, from giveaways, from PPC, from Facebook, and just all of this stuff basically. Um, especially like linking click funnels to Amazon so that when your customer, they click an ad on Facebook, they get taken to a click funnels page, they then give their email, uh, maybe then they get an ebook or something for that email, then you're building a customer base, um, then they get um, a free product or something which gets sent out by Amazon, and that whole like massive circle that you can do by linking click funnels, by having a lead magnet such as like an ebook, um, by linking that to Amazon so they get the product shipped out for like a discount or something, that's just a machine that just churns out sales, it builds your customer base and this is like a massive machine we're building and a massive brand we can build that I just go over completely and in depth in the Amazon FBA UK course. So that ends the video guys, thanks for watching, I know it's been a bit of a long one but I hope you've got loads of information from it and if you've watched it to the end I'm sure you've learned something you haven't heard before. All links for the tools I mentioned in this video are in the description. So like Helium 10, Viral Launch, um, I'll chuck in the Jump Send link as well. All of the tools you'll need. If you have any questions or anything like that, you need any help with a launch or just any stage in your Amazon journey, another link below for the biggest Amazon FBA UK group. And like this is just the most active one. If you need me, I'm in there all the time. I answer all the questions. I'm not absent in there like uh, most other UK like group owners. Um, so if you need any questions, you want to contact me personally, contact me through the group that's where i reply to most of my messages through facebook hope you enjoy this one guys like comment subscribe let me know down below what you thought of this video do you like them more in depth and longer or do you like them short and sweet um, i really appreciate any comments on this video because it took a long time to make and i included some secrets i wasn't necessarily going to in the first place so like comment subscribe hope you'll enjoy this video i'll see you in the next one